C-SPAN arises in two ways, that within the House and the Senate, the reformers are trying to open up Congress to the media. So there's a big push in 1977 in the House to say television cameras should be allowed in, in the chamber, and they finally convinced Tip O'Neill to do that. So that has nothing to do with C-SPAN. This is kind of an interesting example of how different things come together. So in 77, O'Neill agrees to allow cameras in, but there's no one to cover, and part of, that's part of why he agrees to it. Okay. There's no sense of cable. There's no sense of C-SPAN, so it's not that big a threat. Yeah. 1979, a young he, guy... He Brian, would let him in, but nobody would come. That was his... TV didn't come. He was cover. pretty confident. Yeah. Uh, who's going to cover this? You know, yeah. And, uh, and C-SPAN forms by in 78 and 79, and even then, no, O'Neill isn't worried because there's no conception of cable being very important. They're, the idea was network TV. So he's an independent entrepreneur, Brian Lamb. Uh, who is enthralled by satellite technology, and he forms his channel in 79, starts by covering the House in 84, the Senate agrees. And initially, it's a very small station, yeah. uh, but it's motivated by this idea that opening government is a good yeah. thing in itself, yeah. that yeah. that actually can cure a lot of problems. Yeah. It, uh, when you would watch, if, if one would watch, uh, those uh, televised proceedings on the floor, I mean, you know, the old saying, it was like watching grass grow. But... Um, it was very misleading, wasn't it, Julian? Because as part of the uh, ag agreement for being let in, C-SPAN agreed that it would focus only on the dais. Yes. Well, they're pretending that there's an audience out there and the floor is empty. Right. And people have entire... In fact, there's a very funny story about how O'Neill... Uh, why O'Neill uh, uh, ordered the cameras to pan once, contrary to the rules. Why don't you tell that story, because it it's very indicative. And it shows how conservatives were taking advantage of these reforms. One of the things the young Republicans like Newt Gingrich do is they go on the floor every morning at the end of the day, and they make these short speeches where anyone can get up and speak. Yeah. And they start making speeches attacking the Democrats for being weak on communism, for not giving money to anti-communist forces. And it looks like they're making a speech to the full house, but in fact, they're the only ones there. Yeah. And by May, I think, of 84, <laughs> they're doing this, and they're challenging Democrats. So they're saying... You're weak on defense. Why don't you stand response? up and you got me? <laughs> you got it. So at one point, Tip O'Neill is so furious because they're attacking Eddie Bolin, yeah. who is one of his closest friends. They used to drive roommate. back and forth him to Boston every weekend. You got it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he gets so mad that he orders the cameras to pan. So viewers <laughs> see an empty chamber. Uh, yeah. But it actually becomes, even though, it, and so, and so the, it's exposed. Uh, but Republicans actually, those young Republicans, that's a key moment in their history because uh, despite what happens with the cameras, it gains them notoriety. All of a sudden, they're being covered on New York Times. Yeah. TV Guide has a story on Can Scam, as it was called. Yeah. And all of a sudden, people like Newt Gingrich are real powers, yeah. and they use the technology yeah. quite brilliantly. Uh, and, and then they turn it against O'Neill because they say the rules are you can't pan the chamber. Look at this guy. He's just breaking the rules. Yeah. And, and it, uh, that's, that's a turning point in their history. But it's an amazing story uh, on, on, on how these reforms and how this new television uh, was being used by you know, conservatives. You know, if I may put it this way, it's a marvelous story for another reason because when you think about the spirit of the thing, these guys who were standing up and challenging the Democrats to respond when there, were no, there was nobody in the phone, they were cheating. They were, they were misleading the public, and it's a form of cheating by, because you're making everybody think, oh, there's people out there who are too weak uh, to respond to me when there's nobody there. And then they complain mm -hmm. because O'Neill breaks the rules because he pans to show that they're cheating. Right. I mean, this is Congress for sure. Uh, well, that's... That's a value judgment, isn't it? All right. It also, I mean, one of the things that happens with C-SPAN, with cable television, is that legislating becomes a television event. And one of the things you're seeing here is the ability to manipulate the camera, to appear before the camera in a certain way becomes absolutely essential if you want to be powerful. Yeah. And both Democrats and Republicans are starting to learn this, uh, how important that yes, is. Yes, and, and, and explain that now uh, legislators... Uh, rely on television to get uh, their face on the tube back in their districts, explain how they have their own television facilities and 
so on and so forth. Oh, they vastly expanded their public relations, each member, not just the leadership, yeah. public relations staff. They're trained uh, to, to do television. One of the other stories I tell They're is, trained. That's yeah. important. They're and trained. that goes back. Tip O'Neill, yeah. when he starts as a leader in the, in the mid-'76 and 77, he hates TV. Yeah. He, won't, he rejects Sunday morning talk show invitations because yeah. he wants to go to the Cape. But by 1980, <laughs> when Ronald Reagan is elected, uh, he realizes if he doesn't do well on television, he doesn't appear uh, in a compelling way, he's not going to be effective. So he hires this young guy named Chris Matthews who uh, comes in and he teaches him how do you sit in front of a camera? How do you speak to the camera? How do you repeat points over and over so they work? Yeah. And Tip O'Neill remakes himself on television to the yeah. point he appears on the television show Cheers. Yeah. Uh, and he yeah. really turns yeah. into almost the Santa Claus figure by 84 yeah. and 85, yeah. Yeah. whereas yeah. earlier yeah. he was depicted yeah. as this old machine yeah. type politician. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's a one story of millions at this point. Yeah. And you can't really be a legislator without that skill right now. Yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.